Hello, I enjoyed everything that you shared in regards to informed consent. So some of the similarities in the informed consent forms that I found compared to yours is that they both go over fees and insurance policies, confidentiality, and go over the populations that they serve. One of the main differences that I found is that my informed consent went over the risk of psychotherapy in the schedule. So they explained that the first two to four sessions would be evaluations and at the end of those evaluations the client would then receive a treatment plan and after they receive that treatment plan they will be able to decide if they would like to receive treatment. Um, one of the differences I found in yours is that they provided a explanation of how to maximize services. I think that's really important for the client to know the best way to get everything out of the services they are being provided. In regards to your question, I think practices that have more than one counselor should have multiple informed consents just because counselors are going to have different services provided and use different forms of therapy, so that way each individual therapist will be covered. In regards to telepsychology, I found an article and it is from the guidelines of for the practice of telepsychology 2013. It shares that the demands of the counselor and the client will be different in each situation and it is the role of the counselor to take in the consideration of the balance that is needed for telepsychology. I hope this information helps you and I enjoy looking into the information. Thank you so much.